My biggest frustration as a startup, it can be the bureaucracy of some of my customers. If, if I send them an invoice, a little small simple invoice, I sometimes get questions like this. Um, could you uh, separate some items on the invoice because uh, we have a 200 year old accounting system? Or um, uh, could you maybe fill out this form that has exactly the same information as everything that is on your invoice and we already have, but just in case. Or maybe you could uh, send your, for, uh, your invoice also to our secret office in Switzerland and add a purchase order number. Or uh, the, the most interesting one, uh, uh, maybe you can, um, uh, uh, no, I forgot about that one. Uh, don't matter. Uh, oh, maybe you can add your signature on our uh, paper version uh, paper version, and add it in, in blood or something like that. It is all very crazy. Anyways. This is your Hanapolo. This is episode six of, of uh, 15 minutes on air, and I'm going to talk to, going to talk about startups with uh, Lawrence McCahill. Hello, Lawrence. Hi there, Jürgen. Glad you're joining me. You are the founder of the Happy Startup School, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, how can you how can you help me be happier with all the bureaucracy that I'm sometimes confronted with? <laughs> well. Yeah, I'm not sure I can really help with the invoicing issue, but um, I feel your pain. <laughs> Maybe not being, being written in blood, but I've certainly um, experienced that. Um, so yeah, I think, well, as our name says really, our ethos is, is really about starting a business, but with happiness at its core. So um, we're trying to build a movement of people that want to do business differently and aren't just focused on money as their sole objective really, and so that's that's hopefully what I can bring to the table is one, helping you with your startup, but two, helping you define what, what happiness means to you. All right, that's great. And and I, I looked at your website, it looks awesome, it has great design, uh, I really like that. Um, and I saw you published a book or two as well. Um, um, and something that stood out to me was uh, the four P's. Um, uh, what were they? They were uh, passion, purpose, people, and profits. Um, uh, I was wondering which of those should come first, do you think? Is there one that should come first? Um, well, yeah, you're right. We, we call it the four P's of a happy startup, and we put them in the order that we think are the most important. So profits is deliberately last um, and is there. You know, It's not something we've left out. I think that's one thing that's key for us is not looking at profits as a bad word. And um, So, yeah, passion for us is the starting point for any, should be the starting point for any business, really, being passionate about a problem you're solving, being passionate about an audience you want to serve or you know something driving you but but really without that passion you're going to find it really hard to to build a successful business because um, ultimately you're going to hit a bumpy road at some point and if you're not really believing in what you're doing then you're going to you know, find it difficult and so you know purpose is key as well I mean I think the thing for us is like purpose can really help to ignite your passion further because you then realize um, why you're doing what you're doing and so that can be quite powerful but ultimately you know following your gut a little bit and something that might make you angry that's we think that's a great way and a, a great starting point for innovation all right um, uh, sounds sensible to me but I, I just read an article by Scott Adams the creator of Dilbert have you seen it by any chance uh, he, uh, no, he said yeah. Okay, so um, he said something like, and you know, he, he's a very cynical guy, of course. Mm -hmm. so we'll have to uh, keep that in mind. But he said something like, "How can you be passionate about creating uh, new screwdrivers or or whatever? It's not about passion, but it's about about other things." Uh, do you think there can be there there are things that people will never be passionate about, but still need to be done? I think that's partially true, but I think even, you know, you can have the most mundane job or the most what seemingly seems like a mundane activity that can actually um, deliver a lot of value to someone and, you know, be something someone is passionate about. So to me, it's more about, you know, thinking of the outcome of the work you're doing rather than the thing you're building. And I suppose that's one thing we see a lot of is focusing on the product. So you could say, you know, it's hard to get passionate about screwdrivers, but you could say that it's quite easy to get passionate about building a house, you know, or creating a cathedral, which might need a screwdriver. So, you know, if you think of your work in the context of something higher than what you're doing, then I think that that's where the passion comes in, is being in touch with the outcome of what you're doing versus the seemingly mundane task in, at hand. So, you know, you could be someone cleaning a toilet but be happy at work, you know, because you're making people, you know, go through their day. If you've got a smile on your face, then that's going to make you happy. So 
Um, so yeah, I think I'm. You know, there are people who always assume that business is a function and it should be purely about making money. But um, I think to me that's a bit short-sighted and focuses less on creating something more meaningful for the long term. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, I I had similar questions from from people that I met um, last the last year. They said that we that the software we create in our company is is very mundane. It's very boring. It's just one banking application after another or something. And they asked me how can we ever be passionate about that? And um, I I. I think I have a similar opinion as you there. I see it as looking at the, the, the next level, the meta level. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for me, it would be how can I produce that that boring software in the shortest amount of time, like at the at the touch of a button, mm -hmm. and then and then seek the passion there in in, in doing in creating many simple applications or, or boring applications, but then make the process in, interesting or, or whatever, or the architecture behind it. There's always something. Yeah. I think that you could be passionate uh, about. Um, yeah. I about think one thing I'd add to that is, I mean, my background is a designer, and that's still a lot of the work I do. Um, to me, it's really about designing for humans, really. Like, if you're a designer designing that system, then you're designing for another person who's using that system. So technology is just the medium in which you communicate with that person. So trying to get more personality through software is something that I do and help with, but is something that's lacking in certainly a lot of industries. So, you know, seeing, like you said, talking about making that process simple and straightforward, as well as trying to get some kind of emotional connection with your with your audience. Um, and you've got an opportunity there and a responsibility that, you know, banking's a good example. You know, in the UK particularly, there's four big banks that everyone, if they had a better option, would jump ship, you know, would go elsewhere, but there isn't that ability. So, you know, they can deliver a second-rate service and still still have customers. So you know yeah. that's right for, right for disruption. Mm, yeah, I, I I would I would agree there. Um, by the way, I think you missed two P's uh, because I think what is crucial in your formula is cappuccino. Right? That's two P's <laughs> that you're still you're still missing there. But I, that will be essential for me to make everything else uh, else work. Um, Everyone needs coffee. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um, um, my second question. Um, what is a typical mistake that you see many entrepreneurs or startups make? What is something that we should all learn from that, that have been done badly by others before us? Um, so yeah, I mean, I've got too many to mention, but <laughs> um, one that springs to mind which we come across a lot is you know, when you start with an idea, not being too wedded to the solution, um, which may sound odd because the first thing you do when you have an idea is think of what the solution might be to the problem you're solving, um, whether it's a product or service. And I think too many startup founders make the mistake of um, assuming too much and therefore plowing on with their idea based on a way of solving that problem. And one thing we try and do is help people to shape the purpose that like we talked about. So. Say you wanted to build, um, you know, uh, I don't know, a widget, for example, and that widget solves a problem. If you took a step back and think, okay, we're trying to solve this problem, there may be other ways of solving it through, you know, technology rather than building widget. And so, I think um, for me, that's the one big thing: is people take their idea, they sketch out a solution, and then they build that solution without engaging with their customers or audience too much. And there's a lot of wasted effort there in terms of money, in terms of energy in terms of resource, that if they were, I think the great line I've heard from um, Jeff Bezos who started Amazon said, be strong on vision but flexible on detail. Um, so know where you're going and what's driving you, but be really open on how you get there, what the solution is that you build that solves that problem. And it may be that it's very different to what you thought you needed at the beginning. Um, right. That, that sounds very much like the lean startup, doesn't it? Uh, to have a vision and then, then relentlessly go back and forth and left and right until you found <laughs> some way of, 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 of getting there. Yeah, I mean, uh, we embrace some lean thinking in, in what we do, um, but also with, so for those who don't know, lean startup is based on the premise of trying to reduce risk and create value. So making sure that every activity you do, um, you know, is, is creating value in some right way. Um, I suppose what we bring to the table is also a more human aspect to, to that model, which is design thinking, empathy, and more human values at the heart of that. So 
I think to me, lean startup can feel a bit um, scientific and a bit methodical, which is good in one way. Um, but I think the thing it's lacking is thinking higher. And we talked about purpose. You know, why are you doing this? Um, where are you going with this? Why are you working on this idea, not another idea? Um, which, when you start to dig deeper, can often get people to question the, the, the business before they've even started, which I think you need to do. You need to take that step back to think, you know, why am I trying to build a dating app? You know, do I care about that problem? Um, and I think that's something that if you work in that kind of lean startup way, after a while you think, well, I'm trying to solve a problem here. Unless I'm trying to solve a problem about something I believe in, then I'm less likely to succeed. And that's why we think having this more human approach gives you a better chance of success. All right. That's, I, I, I think I, I'm, I'm on to something there, uh, thanks to you, because uh, I've always said the Lean Startup uh, has added something to, uh, to the Agile Manifesto, where the Agile mm -hmm. Manifesto only says uh, produce working software over uh, comprehensive documentation, and the Lean Startup movement says uh, make sure that you have a customer at all for your working mm -hmm. software. So. Uh, uh, find 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 customers before making uh, working mm -hmm. software. Um, but on the other hand, uh, the Agile Manifesto says individuals and interactions over processes and tools. And the Lean mm -hmm. Startup is typically a process that is offered uh, without any mention of the individuals and their interactions. Yeah, uh, assuming that this is all in place. So I think you have a good point there that this is not something that we uh, that we must must forget uh, that there mm. are people there uh, doing that process, and we need to, they they have to be happy uh, at the, at the same time. Yeah, and I, I think of it in terms of you know any of these um, methodologies, they're just tools. You know, you've got a toolkit of um, tools you can use for any project, and it's trying to pick the right tools for the job. So. You know, not trying to say we've got this process. But, you know, every single work, we, every single idea we have has to go through the same process in the same way. Um, it's not a silver bullet, and I don't think any process, whether it's agile, lean, or um, Prince Two, Waterfall, uh, they're all just processes, and ultimately, you know, um, you need to adapt to the context that you're in. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So let's let's get away from the processes and let's get back to a, the, my last and and sort of uh, philosophical question, almost. Um, uh, does does happiness precede uh, uh, pursuing success in the company, or should we pursue success first? And does happiness follow from that? Uh, what do you think? Well, I'm not sure it's the sort of question you can answer in a couple of minutes, but I'll, I'll have a bash. Um, I mean, I think, and, and recent studies that have shown that success doesn't necessarily lead to happiness. I mean, there's a big um, the big idea that people have that when I get that pay rise, when I achieve that goal, you know, I'll then, you know, happiness will ensue as a result. So I'll be able to get the car I want, or move house, or you know, that wife that is, is, hasn't come yet will suddenly come to me because I've, I've got all these things now. Um, whereas I think people are realizing that chasing that goal doesn't make you happy. You know, you you just raise the bar every time, so that when you've reached that milestone, you then have another measure of success, which might be a bigger house or better job and promotion. So, um, you know, our philosophy, which I think more and more people are realizing, is if you, you know, do what you're good at and do what makes you passionate, then you're going to be successful as a result. It might take a bit longer, but ultimately, that passion that you've got will shine through the work you do. And, you know, to give you some context, my story um, after I graduated, graduated a few years ago was um, I went into the city of London for a year in a, in a job there, and I think luckily now, but not so lucky at the time, it was probably the worst experience I've ever had in the workplace. But <laughs> I've, um, I use that experience to then sort of mold the work I did in, in years to come. But it made me realize how bad work can get as a, as a cultural you know, place, place to be. Um, and so you know, I could have easily stayed in that career, earned a lot more money in the short term, you know, and, and you know, been successful from, from the outside. But inside, you know, that wouldn't have been success to me. And so, I think it really comes down to a defining success because that's you know so subjective, but also then um, defining happiness as well because happiness to some people means um, walking around with a smile on your face for the day. To me, happiness isn't about that. It's it's about meaning. It's about relationships. It's about impact. You know, it's about lifestyle, um, which then feed into your day-to-day -day emotions. Really, so I think there's a bit of a well, happiness polarizes a little bit, and I think there's a misunderstanding around it, and so. 
it's trying to create a new sort of narrative around that that, that is more deep than just, you know, um, the happy clappy crowd. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a great answer. And it always me mean, also means that we are now at 15 minutes. So uh, we we'll okay. have, we'll have to wrap it up already, uh, um, uh, Lawrence. So uh, I, I actually I think I think it's a bit of both. Uh, mm. I think uh, uh, happiness uh, gives you a better chance at at achieving success. Uh, but at the same time, there is a science uh, uh, that says that there's a correlation between the success of companies and the happiness that people enjoy afterwards. Uh, people feel happier when their companies are, are doing well. So uh, it's probably a complex issue and, and uh, we need to do both at the, at the same time. Uh, so, um, well, that's, that's it for now. I, I, have, I am very happy as well. Look at that. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence, for, uh, for joining this uh, 15 minutes on air. Uh, and uh, um, I will uh, I will add uh, uh, some uh, some screenshots of your website and your and your booklet to this uh, to this video. I hope some people will uh, will check it out. Brilliant. And uh, and I'm sure we will be in contact because uh, I I want to talk more about the happiness because Happy Melia is very interested in in being happy, and the Happy Startup School as well. So I think we can uh, we can do a couple of things together uh, there. So uh, thanks again. Okay. Thanks again. Good. So thanks everyone for watching and uh, maybe I will be back uh, after the holidays, uh, Christmas and New Year's with the next video that will be episode 7. Take care. Thank you very much. Goodbye world.